So, now let's get into the progressives, which is period 7, part 2. And if you remember, period 7 is from 1890 to 1917, 1890 being the turn of the century, meaning it's the introduction into the, de the Depression of 1893, otherwise known as the Panic of 1893, whichever one you want to call it. And the progressive era and movement is a, actually a response to the Gilded Age politics and policies as well as a continuation of the reforms and advocations that the uh, that the populace had during the Gilded Age era. And so let's get in to this part of the period. So let's start off with five essential questions that will that we will answer in the conclusion to this video. And so the first one is explain how democratic participation was able to increase during the uh, progressive era. And list some examples. Uh, number two is stretching back to the Gilded Age, examine how the progressive era and the progressives themselves were able to address the inequalities established during the Gilded Age. Um, inequalities referring to gender, uh, racial inequality, as well as wage inequality. Examine Teddy Roosevelt and William Howard Taft's role as trust busters and evaluate the outcomes. Uh, how did, and the fourth one, how did a prohibition change American society both negatively and positively? Um, number five, explain the election of 1912 and why this is a significant election. And so now we will finally get into our video and our discussion over this second part of period seven. So the progressives, as you can see, there are a ton of arrows in the name and the title of the progressives. And that is because the progressives advocated for a change in society through political action, not the way that the, that the populace had done it. The populace wanted economic change through lobbying, through um, strikes, through violence and other tactics that were very ineffective. Uh, the progressives had a very more efficient tactic and one that was what much more effective because their policies actually ended up, you know, being heard and actually being enacted. And so the reason why the, the progressives are so important is because a lot of the democratic policies that we have today are started or carried out by the progressives. And so now we'll, we will discuss the vocabulary of the unit, and then we will go back <clears throat> to discussing the uh, answers to the essential questions. And so, the 16th Amendment. The 16th Amendment is an amendment for bank reform and tax reform. So, essentially what it did was it was enabled Congress to tax the state legislatures as they so please. The 17th Amendment was a direct election of senators. The 18th Amendment was Prohibition, which was repealed by the 22nd or 21st Amendment, whichever one of those. I think it's the 22nd. And then you also have the 19th Amendment, which allowed women to vote, of course. 1920, or 1919, my bad. In 1919, women were allowed to vote. And so Booker T. Washington is the next vocab um, word. And so he is actually the most influential African-American uh, at the turn of the century and was the head of the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. In his Atlanta exposition speech in 1895, Washington argued that blacks' needs for education and economic progress were of foremost importance. Uh, and that they should concentrate on learning industrial skills and better wait for better wages. Only after establishing a secure economic base, said Washington, could African Americans hope to realize their other goal of political and social equality. And so the next thing is the Bull Moose Party. And the Bull Moose Party is actually a subset of the Republican Party that Theodore Roosevelt formed after he disagreed with the policies of William Howard Taft got um, disappointed, was disappointed in him, and ran through the Bull Moose Party, which split the Republican Party in half, which allowed Wilson to win. Conservation is the next term. So conservation 
was the political policy of Taft. And as a conservation of Taft established the Bureau of Mines, added large tracts in the Appalachians to the National Forest Reserves, and set aside federal oil lands. Then you have Ida Tarbell's The History of Standard Oil, which was an attack against Rockefeller, because Ida Tarbell's father had been put, it, put out of business by Rockefeller, and so she felt a little uh, upset about that and decided to reveal the cruelty, the corruption, and the, and the terrible uh, acts of the Standard Oil Company that Rockefeller had formed. In the initiative referendum and reform, those are the three policies of the progress of the progressives during this time period. Jane Addams's whole house was her way of helping the immigrants during the century. So during this time period, there were 79 million inhabitants of America, and one out of seven of them were foreign born. And many of these lived, many of these immigrants lived in small tenements, uh, meaning just one room buildings and the whole family would live there. Uh, and so these were cramped buildings. They weren't able to get that much money. They weren't able to, they weren't able to live well and they also didn't have much of an education. And so what, what Jane Addams did was she took these immigrants and put them into her house, babysat the kids, taught um, them these educational skills, working skills, and just stuff that could help them get along in life. And the next term is uh, La Follette's um, Wisconsin Plan, or Wisconsin Idea, whichever you prefer, which was a series of progressive measures that included a direct primary law, a tax reform, and state regulatory commissions to monitor railroads, utilities, and business such as insurance. And the Meat Inspection Act provided the federal inspectors visit meat packing plants to ensure that they met minimum standards of sanitation. And back to conservation, as I had said before, conservation was also championed by Roosevelt, um, which was a way to protect the environment. Conservation was a environmental policy. Remember that. Conservation was an environmental policy supported very strongly by Roosevelt and continued to be carried out by Taft. Not as strongly by Taft, very strongly by Roosevelt. All right. The next one is, are, muck, are muckrakers. And so muckrakers are called that because um, Roosevelt said that they mucked the rake, they uh, raked the muck out of society and revealed the corruption. And so this is the sort of stories like Ida Tarbell's um, The History of Standard Oil, um, you know, Upton St. Clair's The Jungle, which was a muckraking book by Upton St. Clair, again, as I had said before, which described in horrifying detail the conditions in the Chicago stockyards and meatpacking industry. The public the, and the public outcry following the publication of Sinclair's novel caused Congress to enact two regulatory laws, including the Pure Food and Drug Act, which forbade the manufacture, sale, and transportation of adulterated and mislabeled foods and drugs, and the Meat Inspection Act, which I had discussed before. And... New freedom is what the people, the black people, really, uh, the Amer the African Americans during this time period, wished to obtain, as well as the immigrants. They wanted new freedom, newfound freedom to do what they wanted. The next term is the Square Deal, which was introduced by President Roosevelt. And so, presidents in the 19th century had consistently taken the side of owners in conflicts with labor, especially with the Pullman strike. Uh, however, in the first economic crisis in his presidency, Roosevelt quickly demonstrated that he favored neither business nor labor, but insisted on a square deal for both. The crisis, um, the crisis involved a strike of anthracite coal miners through much of 1902. If the strike continued, many Americans fear that without coal they would freeze to death when winter came, Roosevelt took the unusual step of trying to mediate the labor dispute 
by calling a union leader and coal mine owners to the White House. So he essentially brought them to his house to discuss with them how to fix the problem. This is such a Teddy Roosevelt thing to do that I can't e even explain how incredible this is. And voters seem to approve of Roosevelt and this Gore deal. They elected him by a landslide in 1904. And the next term uh, is W.E.B. Du Bois, who founded the NAACP, or the National um, or the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And the Pendleton Act of 1881 set up the Civil Service Commission and created a system by which applicants for classified federal jobs would be selected on basis of their scores on a competitive examination. And so this essentially removed the spoil system, that, which essentially set up a bureaucracy and instead replaced it with a meritocracy. And so let's go back in time for a second. Let's go back to those essential questions that I had asked before, and let's answer them together. Not really together, since I'm the only one here, so I'll answer them for you. Sound good? That's good. All right, let's do this. Uh, explain how democratic participation was able to increase during the progressive era and list some examples. De democratic participation was able to increase during this era because of the rise in the progressive movement, which essentially reformed the government directly Directly. They reformed the government directly rather than what the populists did, which was they reformed it indirectly through strikes, violence, and other forms of, you know, protest. Um, and some examples were the 17th Amendment, direct primaries, and the, and the 19th Amendment. And stretching back to the Gilded Age, examine how the progressives were able to address the inequalities established during the Gilded Age. Uh, the democratic reforms, such as the introduction of the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote, and the funding of the NAACP, which argued for the removal of caste distinctions based on race. Those are a few examples. Examine Teddy Roosevelt and Taft's role as trust busters and evaluate the outcomes. Teddy was the first president to use the Sherman Antitrust Act to break apart an actual trust and not a labor union. He did, however, make a distinction between good and bad monopolies. Good mon monopolies were those that dominated a market through efficiency and low prices. Taft continued Roosevelt's progressive policies in regards to trust busting. Taft, unlike Roosevelt, did not see the difference between trust and eventually busted U.S. Steel, which included a merger that Roosevelt had supported. And Teddy took this as a personal attack, which eventually led to a split in the Republican Party, the Bull Moose Party, and the regular Republican Party which is how Wilson won the 1912 election. How did Prohibition change American society both negatively and positively? Well, it was repealed by the 22nd Amendment, which is a problem, as well as the fact that no one actually followed the law. Many people, many thought, but many still thought that pro that pro prohibited the sale of alcohol, that prohibiting the sale of alcohol would clean up morals and politics in one stroke. Many of these prohibitionists, or dries, were able to persuade the legislatures of two-thirds of the states to ratify the 18th Amendment. And the final question was, explain the election of 1912 and why this is a significant election. Well, the fact that Wilson was won in a progressive era shows that the progressive reforms of the Republicans were very dependent upon the type of person who had advocated for them, a.k.a. Taft or Roosevelt. The split of the Republicans allowed Wilson to seize victory in the election of 1912 as a Democrat. And that concludes period seven, part two, the progressive era.